Hello, I am Jill Sharfman, and this is a mini episode of Let My People Eat, where I share a personal story, a parable, or a bit of Jewish history from which we can all learn something. There are a lot of misconceptions about what foods we should be eating, when we should be eating them, and in what combination. You always have a friend who is on the newest fad diet and is extolling its virtues, whether it's a juice diet or gluten-free, bulletproof coffee, or intermittent fasting. So you think, maybe this is for me. The truth is that while each option may have its merits, you need to determine if the people you are asking are truly wise in these matters. The following story is from the Tales of the Wise Men of Helm, which focuses on the collective foolishness of the town people. They are forever meeting to solve the great issues of the time. I love these silly stories about the Jewish village of fools who think, of course, that they are very wise. How did so many of these foolish people end up in one place? Well, they say that an angel, unnerved by a clap of thunder, mistakenly dropped a whole bag of foolish souls there in this village. Here is an example of their wisdom. Our old friend Gimple was now a man of great wealth. His was the finest shop. He owned the largest house. He wore the best sheepskin coat. And naturally, he was the president of the synagogue. The Lord had also blessed Gimple with an only son named Yassel, who was the apple of his father's eye. When Gimple deemed it was time for the boy to be married, he set forth in search of a bride befitting his darling Yassel, a bride beyond compare. Gimple sought long and hard, and at last his quest was rewarded. In the great city of Warsaw, he found a beautiful maiden, daughter of the most pious Jew in the realm. She was as accomplished as she was beautiful. She could play the piano and speak with the greatest elegance. She never said thank you as a is the custom in Helm, but merci, as the French said. When she ate, she chewed delicately, and on her head she wore a tiny bonnet. It was whispered about the bonnet that had been sent from Paris especially for her. She carried a red silk parasol and wore pink satin slippers with high heels. Besides all this, she was truly pious and could read her prayers as fast as the rabbi. Hiring the most elaborate carriage in Warsaw, Gimple brought the beautiful maid to Helm. When the townsfolk saw her promenading through the marketplace so fair and noble, they said, Gimple has truly found a princess for his yassel. Gimple ordered musicians from Plotsk, waiters from Warsaw, a cook from Odessa, a cantor from Vilna, and a botcham from Broad. To buy the fowl for the golden broth, he traveled to the distant city of Dorpets, beyond Konigsberg. To Dorpets, famous for its plump white hens, its well-fed ducks, and its fatted geese. It went Gimple to the finest butcher in the city and said pompously, Butcher of Dorpets, I want the best, the plumpest hens and ducks and geese that you have. Money is no object. I'm Gimple of Helm, and my son Yassel is going to be married, said the butcher. Certainly, Gimple, great merchant of Helm, I've heard of you. Don't worry. For you, I will select the finest fowl in the city. Not just ordinary hens and ducks and geese, but each one better and tastier than the other, and all as rich and juicy as pure schmaltz. Now, schmaltz is the most delicately flavored food, a fat that comes from the best kind of fowl. And when Gimple heard the butcher compare his birds to schmaltz, He became indignant, for it is not obvious that one always seeks to make a poorer thing seem better, a weaker thing seem stronger. So it must follow that schmaltz was better than fowl, said Gimple. You can't fool me, butcher. No hens or ducks or geese for me. I'm a rich merchant. I can afford the best of everything, especially for my son's wedding. I should use nothing but pure schmaltz for the golden broth. The butcher could hardly believe his ears, so he asked, what's this? Are you crazy? You mean you... Gimple said, you mean to tell me you won't sell me any schmaltz? All right, I'll buy it somewhere else. So the butcher then said, bless you, my good Gimple, but what made you think that I don't want to sell you any schmaltz? You want schmaltz? Then schmaltz it will be. Well, I'll send you the very best schmaltz in all of Poland. Schmaltz is fragrant and yellow as olive oil from the far of Holy Land. When Gimple heard this, he exclaimed furiously, swindler of a butcher, scoundrel of a trickster, olive oil must be better than olive oil I can get in any grocery store. What do I need a rascal like you for? He said, I am Gimple, leading citizen of Helm. My one and only son is to be married, and for the golden broth at his wedding, I want the finest olive oil that the money can buy. There in the corner, said the shopkeeper, stands a barrel of olive oil that is like one of the seven wonders of the world. Olive oil is clear and pure and transparent as water fresh from the well. At this, Gimple nearly choked with amazement. This means then, he muttered to himself, that well water is better for the golden broth than olive oil, which is better than schmaltz, which is better than hens and ducks and geese. Why did I have to drag myself all the way to Dorpets when everyone knows that Helm has the best well water in Europe? Without another word, Gimple departed and took himself back to Helm. When he came home, he rolled up his sleeves, hastened to the square, and drew a bucket full of water from the town well. Carrying it home carefully so as not to spill a drop, he said to his Odessa cook, From this precious liquid you will cook the golden broth. Nothing so ordinary as hens, ducks, or geese for us. 
Not being a Chalmite, the cook looked startled, stared at the water, then at Gimple, then back at the water again. Puzzled, she started to taste the water when Gimple shrieked, Stop, fool, what are you doing? That's for the golden broth. Whereupon the cook remembered that she was in Chalm, shrugged her shoulders and said to herself, Now there is a Chalmite for you, soup made from well water. Yes, of course, the golden broth at your son's wedding will certainly be something different, she said. I am Jill Sharfman, and I hope this makes your day a little more satisfying.